Hello everyone and welcome to the Ghost Layers Report. With me as always, Ryan. Okay, so the thing we're bringing up today is this um, proposed changes to the Japanese Constitution. The changes have been presented by the uh, LDP, which is the Conservative Party here in Japan. It's three key changes they want to make, which they've been rumbling about for years about this. Number one, they want to change Article 9, which forbids Japan from engaging in any type of war. They want to um, change the official um, standing of the emperor and make him the official legal head of state. And finally, they want to officially make the Japanese flag and the Japanese anthem official legal um, things which must be observed and respected under punishment of law. Okay, so it's, let's touch the big one first, Article 9. Now, Article 9 has been a controversial and uh, sensitive topic in Japan for a long time. Now, Japan is the only country in the world that has made war illegal. In their own constitution it says it is not the sovereign right of any nation to engage in war. You don't have that right. They believe that. Well, the LDP wants to change that, but slightly. They still want to say war is renounced and Japan does not engage in war. But they want to do something tricky here. They want to add something that says Japan reserves the right for collective self-defense. Now it sounds like a tricky type of terminology until you break it down and you understand what that actually means. Collective self-defense is how America gets around their own constitution where it says in the US Constitution you must go to Congress for a declaration of war. Well, America gets around that through international law, through use of collective self-defense, which basically means um, if an aggressor attacks a, a nation, you have a, a right, but not a duty, to attack the aggressor nation. So let's say somebody attacks Japan, and America can step in and engage in warfare without it technically being warfare. And say you stand up for your buddy type of thing. Stand up for your friends. Yeah. So they want to change that right. We need to ask ourselves, you know, what is that how does that change Japan? Would it allow Japan to um, send troops overseas? Not just for support but for to actually engage in warfare, which would be a big change for them. Because currently, Japan can even do that. If they do send troops overseas, they cannot be there for military purposes. They're only there to assist, like aid workers. Kind of. They carry a small pistol with them. That's about it. They go through and give the Constitution the right for collective self-defense, well, next time America comes knocking on her door and says, hey, we need you to come over here and help us bomb somebody, Japan can always say, oh, well, there was an aggressor in that country, so we can step in and do something. We can fight them. We can drop bombs. So it just looks to be like an excuse, kind of, for the um, conservative members of the Japanese government to bomb people and be aggressive and raise a bunch of hell around the world the same way America does. If I don't technically be in war, because, hey, you're just looking out for your buddies. That type of thing. So that's what they're looking to do. Now, this thing about the emperor becoming the official head of state, that's a little more controversial, I'd say. Because right now in the Constitution, the emperor serves only as a symbol of Japanese unity under the will of the people to recognize his right as a quote-unquote sovereign. That's all it says. He does not hold any official political power in this country. 
Now, if you make him head of state, that becomes a political position. That does give him some power beyond ceremonial rights. If he's the head of state, he has to engage in official diplomacy with other countries. You know, most Japanese people, to be honest with you, don't give two shits about the emperor of Japan. They respect him, and that's about it. They respect him the same way they respect their own nation, their own identity as being Japanese. They actually think he's some type of leader or someone needs power. Most Japanese would ardently tell you no, no way, you know. And this collective self-defense, I see you might have some support for that here in Japan. Because Japan's got its enemies, just like anybody else. You know, and they would be itching at a chance to you know, go after someone they don't like, like North Korea, if North Korea attacks somebody else. Perfect excuse to get some revenge and drop some bombs. Internationalism, sticking your nose in where it don't belong. Globalism, that's what this is clearly about. Didn't Japan more involved in globalism? It's another sign of with all the things going on here right now of what powers of be want to turn Japan into. And already this um, the Prime Minister Noda is already in negotiations to work out a deal to join the TPP. That's a Trans Pacific Partnership. Creates something similar to like an EU situation where it's an economic zone. And that is globalism. That's sacrificing more in Japan's sovereignty. You know? Now the third thing that we'll cover here is this flag business. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a quick look at that one because that's not one of the major issues in, in Japan. It's that's clearly like a um, political right wing thing. Well, they want to make it you know legally. You have to acknowledge that the, the Japanese flag is the legal flag of Japan, and failure to do so would result in arrest and possible jail time. Now this is coming out of the fact that there's these um, school teachers in Japan who refuse to stand up when the national anthem is being played in schools and refuse to salute the flag because legally they don't legally they don't have to because they don't like what it represents. The Japanese national anthem makes allusions to the emperor being God. So you know there's a lot of people in Japan don't want to go that route. That's in the past for them. They've moved on. They're progressive. You know? But they want to go take a step back and say, you know, how dare you go against what the national anthem says. It's the kind of our legal national motto. And how dare you not salute the flag. It's, it's, um, it gets into issues of freedom of speech, your rights of expression. It does limit you. If you don't believe what the national anthem says, I think you have a right not to stand up and sing it or observe it. And if you don't like the things that the flag that your country represents, you got a right not to um, salute it or, or, or acknowledge it. This would change all that. So yeah, the, the political right in Japan is pushing pretty hard right now. A lot of it seems like globalist agenda and a fascist agenda. Clearly. They're trying to push people into a certain way of thinking and lock their minds up. And they can't decide for themselves what they want to believe. They have to be told what to believe from the government. And this is not an unusual thing out of the Japanese government to try to tell the people how things are going to be. Instead, it should be the other way around if you have a democratic republic. Even under a unitary government system they have, the people should still be in effective control. This is a more push to sacrifice Japan's sovereignty and push them into more globalism and bring back fascism here, here in Japan. So we'll finish up this video on that. But yeah, there's a big debate right now and a push. A bill is going to be pro proposed uh, quite soon to make these amendments. So leave a comment in the comment box below. Let me know what you think about these changes. Will these changes to the Constitution, if they happen, be good for Japan or bad for Japan? and what type of effect these, these things will have on democracy in general in Asia. All right, so you know, thank, again, thank you so much for uh, watching this 
please subscribe to my channel on YouTube under username FreedomWV. So next time, this is of course me here and Ryan. Check it out.